Well, my friends, welcome to Keswick Chapel that you on Pastor Robert. Today we're going to be looking at the way of Jesus is countercultural. When we think about the American culture in the most general sense today, most people think of the American dream, right? You know, the idea that anyone who has a mind to, the determination to, and the initiative to can succeed in America, and that success all too often is qualified by looking around at those around us and determining how we measure up to them. Do we have as much as they do? Do we have more? Are we doing the same kinds of things that they're doing, or are we doing less? Our culture today is all about having more, getting more faster, and excelling past everyone else at the same time. Well, in our passage this week, Jesus is presented with presents an opportunity for this young man that is countercultural. When we look at verses 21 and 22, we read this. Jesus, looking at him, felt a love for him and said to him, You lack one thing. Go and sell all you possess and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Come, follow me. But at these words, he was saddened, and he went away grieving, for he was one who owned much property. This man owned a lot of stuff. Much property is what the gospel tells us. And he was clinging to this materialism before before we become too critical of him. Don't we see that in America today where it's all about materialism and what is materialism, but where we consider material things of more importance, of more value than spiritual things. This has been going on since the beginning of time, my friends. Since Adam and Eve fell in the Garden of Eden, there has been this innate desire to accumulate stuff, to place value in stuff. And Jesus is telling us, that this is not the way to success. This is countercultural. Jesus' way is countercultural to the conventional way of thought. One other example you can read about is in Luke chapter 12, verses 15 through 34. And this again is an example of someone who has much and has much more. And so he builds barns to be able to handle all this excess. And then he finds out that his very life is going to be demanded of him that very day. So he won't even have the opportunity to enjoy the spoils, if you will. So Jesus leads this off in verse 15 with this, watch out, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. A man's life does not consist in abundance of his possessions. Can you see the parallel here between the culture of Jesus' day and the culture that we live in today? Society says and points us to having more, to doing more, being able to do more at all times and in all possible ways. And Jesus says that this is not the kingdom way. So this is not the way of Jesus. Jesus immediately reveals that the kingdom truth is countercultural flying in the face of conventional thought. When you look at verses 23 through 27, Jesus tells us plainly that entry into the kingdom of heaven for the rich is more difficult than a camel going through the eye of a needle. Jesus actually says that it's easier for the camel to go through the eye of the needle. And the eye of the needle, in case you don't know, was an opening in the wall of a city. In order for a camel to go through that opening, The camel had to get on its knees and then basically scoot through this eye of the needle in order to gain entry into the city when the gates were closed. So Jesus is saying that it's easier for a camel to do that than it is for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of heaven. So let's think about this one other thing, though, real quick. Materialism, it doesn't have anything to do with whether you have a lot of money or not. People of every social economical class are guilty or potentially guilty of materialism, wanting things and hanging on to things. And Jesus wants us to focus on spiritual matters. This focus on spiritual matters is 
counter-cultural, and that is the way of Jesus. So let me ask you, my friends, which way are you choosing today? Are you choosing the way of Jesus, or are you choosing your own way? I pray that you'll have eyes to see and ears to hear his truth today as you read these passages and you go back and you chew on these things. I pray you'll have a receptive heart and mind to receive God's truth from his word and then the boldness of Christ to take action. Blessings to you, my friends. Go in the peace of God. Bye for now.